Hey, what's up, everybody? It's uh, TJ. I go by BHC Lead P on almost any social media platform. Just something I've changed recently as we changed the channel. But I'm a lead pastor here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, and so I've been watching a lot of videos. It's a pretty new journey to be the lead guy. So I've been watching a lot of videos. One of those uh, content creators that is a pastor, his name is Chad Brooks. And he runs a podcast, a Facebook group, and some other stuff called The Productive Pastor. Now, his YouTube group is more biblical and theology, which is really interesting. Um, and I'm kind of inspired by his channel. But he put out a challenge to other pastors to see what's in their bag. He did a pastor bag video. I've put one of these out, uh, I think it was last year, um, that was at, uh, the bag of a youth pastor, the everyday carry bag of a youth pastor. And so my bag has changed a little bit um, because of the new job and some new roles. So I thought it would be fun. Let's talk about what does, an, what does a lead pastor, now that I'm a lead pastor, carry versus what does a youth pastor carry. You're going to see a lot of similarities. Um, and we're going to talk about some things that I'm looking at changing this year. But I just thought it would be a fun video to make. So first off, I don't carry anything fancy. It's just a bag. And it's a pretty big bag that I found on Amazon. So it has two cup holders. I need in like straps to keep stuff in there if you want to put a tripod or whatever. I need to email the company or even Amazon because one of these clips broke just randomly while I was in the airport. Nothing on it was literally just clipped in here and broke. So that was weird. But a pretty cool backpack overall. I like it for a couple different features. Um, one, the size because I do have a lot that I do carry. It's a lot less than... Um, Honestly, before, I've really tried to refine down. Um, and when I say before, I mean earlier, like late 2021. So, but one of the features I love is it has this uh, like power plug that you can plug a uh, portable charger into and then I can just hook up a cord right here and I have power. So let's get into the contents of what's actually in here. We're gonna go from back to front, all right? Let's dig in. So the back pocket, I'm not, gonna worry about camera angles and you being able to see me pull everything out. But the very back pocket is TSA friendly, so open super wide to get to the laptop compartment where I carry the same MacBook that I had in my previous video, which I believe is a 2013, 2014 MacBook Air. It's a 13 inch MacBook um, Air. It's pretty sweet and it gets the job done. I am gonna look to upgrade this in this year. Uh, one of the things in my life that I went through last year was celebrating like big things that happened. And one of the big things that happened in 2022 was so I was installed as the lead pastor of Beacon Hill. Hence, BHC, lead pastor, lead P, get it? Boom. But anyway, so I wanna celebrate that with a new MacBook, a new work machine. The reason I go with MacBooks, one is I use a lot of Apple products. So I have an iPhone, I have AirPods, and I have um, a iPad that we're gonna see here in a second. And the integration between them, the ecosystem is just amazing. As well as like, yeah, for gaming and stuff, MacBooks aren't great, but I don't do a lot of gaming. This is a business machine. And I do video editing, lesson prep, all that kind of stuff right on here. So I really do enjoy this MacBook. Even though it's old, it does get the job done. Even editing 4K video, which is pretty cool. So first thing in there is my MacBook, my 13 inch MacBook. So in that same pocket, like this back pocket is really all of my work stuff that I feel is like necessary to just have quick access to. Um, and that's really the front two pockets, but this is more administrative stuff. So then I have uh, whatever book I'm reading. Right now I'm reading The Christian Identity, um, discovering what Jesus has truly done to us. This is volume one by Mac, Matt McMillan. Um, really good so far. I haven't gotten that deep into it as I started it. Um, got into some other stuff uh, and admin stuff, haven't had a ton of time to read, um, like books between school and some other stuff that we're gonna talk about here. It's really hard to like read just for like book sake. I do a lot of studying, but not necessarily through books, more through scripture right now. That's really what I'm focused on. But this is the book I'm reading and it has this really cool, so we do a lot of uh, small business fairs at the church as fundraisers. So if you're in the Cheyenne area, you own a, Cheyenne area and you own a small business, yo, hit us up. Um, try to get in there, but they had these cool little corner marks one of the vendors did, and I think that that's really interesting. So instead of having to dog ear my pages, which I'm really bad about, um, I just use this for the book that I'm reading. And this is actually a really, really good book. Even though only being three chapters deep, there's some really good stuff and some really good content in here. So I highly recommend that you pick one of those up. It's, it's a super interesting read. 
So I carry various notebooks, and so I'm gonna pull all three of them out. Um, and this is one of the things I really wanna change. So I have three separate notebooks in my backpack, which is just ridiculous. So let's start with the back one first. So what I actually want to do, um, going back to that productive pastor, Chad Brooks channel, he uses these Moji A5 journals and then like a traveler's journal notebook set up. So I think that's probably what I'm going to try to move to, to get all three of these into one. So this one is a Lloyd's Journal 1917. So the paper's really nice. I am kind of a fountain pen nerd. Um, but really what this is mainly for is occasional devotional ideas are written in here. Um, early on, I have some uh, prayers uh, and journaling in there because that's what I thought I was going to use it for. I'm just not good at journaling. There's some Wednesday night notes, and then we get down to what I'm using this year. So there's 2020 personal goals, 2020 ministry goals. Um, I have that bookmark with like a magnetic bookmark. So it has two strands, but I'm using those two strands for other things. And so if there's ever something I write in here that I really want to go back to, I want to make sure that I have that marked. And then I mark my daily, like what I did um, from time frames the best I can. Sometimes, you know, you go to fill it out and you don't remember what you did in a day. But so really I use this to keep track of my workload. And I am a little behind. So the last time I filled this out was on the 21st, which was Friday, my day off. And then I had my Sabbath rest day that I try to do. Uh, me, my wife, I really want to focus on time with my family on those days as we prep into Sunday, as well as spending some time in the word and with God in prayer and stuff like that. And then I just have some fun stickers on the front. Beach Please, Drink Company, super good drink company here in Cheyenne. Some of the stickers that they've sold. My parents got me this gnome of the free sticker. I just think gnomes are the coolest thing. And then a Rocket Fist sticker. So that's my Lloyd's Term notebook. And then I have a Moleskin notebook uh, that's kind of one of their bigger soft cover sizes. I actually have three of these because uh, they do come in a three pack, but this is just the one that I have in my bag. And what this is for is I like to write things out um, and then type them up. So I like to like plan. If I'm typing something up, it's finalized. And so this is uh, this notebook specifically um, was is called the game plan, but it's really for uh, planning and prepping um, for like leadership stuff. So here, just an easy one that I don't, I mean, is the events team. So we wrote out kind of things that we wanted for the events team. Uh, expectations there's stuff for all our pastors team leads and this is just kind of growing so as we move on as i move on to this next like step of ministry um, and leading i really want to have our teams worked and so i'm putting a game plan together to make sure that we run well and we do well not that we don't have those in place but this is like my style of it as we kind of change to my leadership and then i have my sermon prep notebook so all my sermons, lessons, Bible studies, anything that I'm doing is in here. So any lesson, anything is in here. Um, and so, yeah, I just have a little, again, it's a moleskin notebook. This one's in pink. Pink's a power color. It's my favorite color. Um, and it's pretty sweet. So I wanted something that was small and would fit in a previous bag I had. And this really worked. Um, and I like this type of notebook. Um, and so that's why I would like to go with the Moji notebooks. They're an A5. So I think they're a little smaller than this one. If I could find a notebook that would house stuff like this size right here and these brown ones, that's probably what I would get. But the A5 being a little smaller is work. It like will work. It should be actually, yeah, it should be. Yeah. So it should be like literally right in between these two, which would be cool. So I have a sermon notebook. I have a planning notebook and I have a scheduling notebook. Um, that are in my bag. And so that's why I kind of want to move to that other system. So all three of them would be in the same notebook. I'd have one thing and not three different notebooks to keep track of. So the next thing I have that I heard from some random tech YouTuber one time is a folder. Now this is just some random folder that was in my parents' house uh, when we were moving them out and cleaning them out. And I was like, well, I'm going to snag one of those and grab it um, and see if I even use it. And I thought, oh, how hokey and silly. Like, why would you that this seems lame, but I'm telling you what, so there's papers that I have in here. So I have my school papers. So I've had this piece of paper in every backpack as I've gone through school and order my classes so I can keep track of what I've taken. Um, and then like I have two forms to just verify. I have five classes left to order. Um, and so, but having these just thrown in a backpack, you can see, look at this blue one. It's all torn up corners are um, like roughed up and stuff. And not that they don't sometimes get roughed up, in here, but I have just a lot of admin paperwork, 
paperwork in here, um, just different things. If someone brings me something, like I have some material in here that someone bought me to go over and see what another church does, um, that's a family member of those, uh, of them to like kind of help me get planned out and stuff. So super cool. I definitely recommend, whether you're in ministry, you're not in ministry, but you carry around a bag and you are gonna have loose papers in there, this, like have not necessarily this specific one, but having a folder is a game changer and it'll keep your stuff looking a lot more crisp and professional. And the last thing in this pocket, like I said, there's a ton in this and part of it's because I have those three separate notebooks in here. Um, I keep my iPad in that front pocket. Now I just have it in some folio case that's similar to the Apple Smart Folio. Um, my mom picked this up for me just as a gift because she's awesome and loves me. I have Be Courageous, Think Outside the Box, and a couple other stickers just randomly on the case just to give it some uh, class, if you will. And then I use this thing for a lot. If I do not want to take my computer, I do have a, a Nutsack, I think it's a Satchel Pro, that I take with me to meetings if I don't feel like I need all this stuff. But my iPad I use for emails, my calendar, Pinterest ideas, some of the different um, documents that we have at the church. Like I have the Google, Google Form app on here for some of the stuff that we do at the church. Um, just some of the different forms that we've created so I can check the responses and such. Uh, Unsplash, I use this a lot to create. I create thumbnails through Canva on here. I utilize Canva a lot for a lot of what I do um, with the church on this channel. Um, this channel is going to become part of my ministry as we move forward. I do have some fun stuff, a couple games, Old School RuneScape, Clash, Podcast, Facebook, of course, emails, the two different ones I have. And then one of the apps that I love the most that pairs with something that we're going to go over here soon, I believe it's called GoodNotes is the one that I'm using. Um, or Notability, sorry, my bad, but Notability. It is awesome. So it's just a notes app. The the like Apple Notes works fine, but one of the things that I noticed it doesn't have as much functionality, and so some of the stuff that I can do with this Notes app is just awesome. Notability is incredible. I can add gifts and different stuff in there to like like when I'm really amazed by something, um, I can write really smoothly with uh, the stylus that I use, and it's just overall a really cool thing. But any communication, any like almost anything that I do admin wise is normally done from this iPad. Um, if you wanna know what's on my iPad, the different apps and stuff that I use mainly, um, let me know and I'll make a video about that. But uh, one of the main things that I do out of this is preach. I was going through a ton of paper and thought, you know what, let's go back to an iPad, let's preach out of the iPad, I can study. It's a good source for school even, um, to have a, I use the YouVersion Bible app to use when I'm when the school that I'm using is using a translation that I'm not, and just to be able to pull it up is amazing. So a lot of good functionality that you can use for an iPad, and I'm not even scratching the surface. This is the iPad uh, eighth generation, I think. Um, it's the one that came out in 2020. I've had it for about a year and a half now, and this thing is just awesome. I don't need a pro. I didn't really want the air. I just wanted something basic, easy, and I do have it with uh, the, uh, the cellular functionality just because if you have a bad internet connection, I can still use this and it's great. So my iPad is the last thing in that pocket, but something that I use a lot. Moving to the next pocket. So you can almost call the back one like my administrative pocket and then this front one my study pocket. So again, a great sized, the pockets in here are huge and very spacious. I could cram way more in here than I have, which is part of the reason I bought it. So the first thing in one of these, they, it has mesh like organizing compartments. I have my hard drive. So it's just a one terabyte hard drive. It's in my passport specifically for Mac, because I wasn't into tech like I am today uh, when I got this, but I believe it's by WD. Anyways, super sweet, it's quick, it's fast. I store a lot of YouTube videos on here as well as any video that I edit for the church. And then I put an, an assistant to the regional manager sticker on here when I was the associate pastor at the church that I'm at now. But this goes everywhere with me uh, and it has a lot of my life on it. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have, I have backup files everywhere. Like, so if that thing goes down, it's not really a big deal, but it's super nice to have everything centralized and be able to distribute data and not have to bog down my computer with it. I then connected to the cord that connects to that power supply. I have just an anchor power bank. Uh, it's got 
like quick charging 3.0, super quick. I've had this thing for a long time and I don't use it that often. With the iPhone that I went with, I went with an iPhone 13 Pro Max because my 12 or 11 Pro Max kind of jumped out on me. So I went with the 13 Pro Max. I literally don't ever have to charge my phone during the day. I may run my battery down because I use my phone a lot, but it's not going anywhere. Like by the end of the day, I can charge it and it's not a big deal. So I don't have to use this a lot, but it is nice if someone at the church needs a charger, if my wife needs one, or if like my iPad or anything else is running low, I can just jump it on that. I know guys, I'm already like at the point where I have a ton of stuff. Then I always, right now at least, this will go away here shortly within 2022, um, but I have my schoolwork. So right now I'm taking a class on the book of uh, Philippians. So I have two books for that. One is Christ Preeminent to study into Philippians. And then I don't remember what this one is called. Probing through Philippians. And then of course, reading through Philippians as well during the class, which is really, really interesting. It's a pretty good class. Um, with the school that I'm going through, sometimes I really agree with stuff that they say. Sometimes I don't. But, um, and I'm online, self-paced, all that weird, good stuff. Being in full-time ministry, a husband and a father, like I don't have time to be going and listening to lectures. So a lot of it is studying and regurg, it's the, it's the studying and regurgitating information portion of school without the, like sitting and listening to a professor. It's not bad, um, but I am ready to be done. I'm not a school guy. The next thing in that pocket is my tech accessories pouch. So I have cords for almost everything in here. I have, um, a super long USB-C cable um, and it's just kind of packed out. I do have a lav mic um, for if I want to use that, some adapters, a cat puller for my keyboard that is at home, a uh, auxiliary port, some dongles uh, for the MacBook Life, and I have a super long braided um, lightning cable. I just dropped the pop filter for my lavalier mic. And then I have a lavalier mic in here, like I said, just some different stuff that I find that I need. And then I have a wired pair of headphones just in case uh, the headphones I carry on a daily basis, which we're about to talk about, ever go dead. So I have that. That's kind of been new since I got this backpack, bringing that and lugging that around with me. But it does work. So the next thing is this pencil case that's in there. It's just a cheap pencil case I found off of Amazon. I didn't want like a huge flat pencil case. I just wanted something that would be really sleek, really cool, and looks different and is organized. So I have on the left hand side, I have some lead for the mechanical pencil that I have. I have colored pencils in here because I do a lot of highlighting whenever I read. And instead of using like a highlighter, now I'm not a big like a Bible journaler guy. I don't really, there's not really a method to my madness. Um, I thought there was going to be, there's not right now, and I'll look at that in the future. But so I just kind of use these colors when I need to change. Um, so right now my favorite color to use is red, just kind of going back to like classic. Um, and then I have this Bic multicolored pen that I use occasionally if I really want to take notes and like have different information in a different color. On the right hand side um, is my fountain pen of choice that I carry with me every day. This is what I use to write all my sermons. It is the Monteverde Deluxe, no sorry, the Monteverde Invencia Deluxe uh, fountain pen. Uh, it is a special edition that had the carbon fiber body with rose gold accents, um, the black nib, super sick. I really like this pen. My wife got it for me for my birthday like two, almost, th almost three years ago, I think. And I love this thing and I use it all the time. I have others um, like on my on body EDC if you want, uh, everyday carry what's in my pockets and we'll do a video about that later. Um, but then I have, uh, if like my for my schoolwork, I use these Sharpie um, like aluminum bodied pens. Uh, they're a felt tip pen that does not bleed which is really cool. So they're great for notes in my Bible as well as notes on paper and in my schoolwork. Um, they don't smear, they don't smudge, they're really awesome. They were discontinued for a long time when they came back out. I can't stop buying them because they're my favorite pen to use. Um, and then I have this Kirutoga, Uni Kirutoga 0 .05 um, mechanical pencil. So I use a mechanical pencil if I need a pencil. I don't need one very often, but if I do, this is what I have obviously because it's in here. I wanted kind of a nicer one. Um, and so like sometimes in prepping and planning uh, for leadership stuff, I'll put it in pencil, meeting notes, I'll put in pencil in case there's something that we need to write. And then the last thing in here is this Logitech Crayon. Now, no, I know I don't have the Apple Pencil, but the Logitech Crayon does exactly what I need. I'm not drawing, I'm not sketching on my iPad. Now, although I think the Apple Pencil would be cool just because 
propri proprietary equipment always works better. The Logitech Cran does exactly what I wanted to do and it's a pretty cool device. Then I have this little Bluetooth keyboard for my um, iPad. So if I don't want to pull out my computer, the keyboard functionality on an iPad is really, really cool to be able to like throw on a Bluetooth keyboard and just type. This is just a really inexpensive one from Anchor, but it gets a job done and it's my travel one. I have a Bluetooth keyboard that I use in my office that you've seen. If you if you want to see it back in my office video, I'll try to remember to put like an insert up here. But I use that Royal Kledge when I'm at home and I'm kind of in my regular work setup from my office. And then I use this if I'm like at a coffee shop or at Beach Police, because I don't really go to coffee shops anymore. I go to Beach Police or Barnes and Noble. And then last thing in that pocket is my preaching Bible. Now we'll talk about this in a later video, but I actually have a two Bible system, if you want to call it that. One is my preaching Bible. So the pastor before me, uh, we were preaching out of the King James and we switched to the modern English version. And if you're like, man, I haven't heard of that version. So that translation, it's because it's super new. 2014 is when it was translated. It was translated off of the KJV to kind of make it easier to understand. And so we switched to this one because it was just an easier transition as we moved from the way the church was before um, our previous lead pastor took over. But I do enjoy reading it. It's a good read. It makes the KJV simple. Um, it's a super easy translation to understand. So if you're like used to the King James and you want to make a transition, no, it's not the new King James, which sounds weird. It's been described, the MEV is what the new King James should have been. But so this is my preaching Bible. I like thin line ones because I can like, if I'm, so when I, if I, especially if I'm teaching a Bible study, I tend to do this a lot or I do this number right here. Now my study Bible, which we'll talk about later, I can do this with and I enjoy it, but this is my preaching Bible. I've been using it. I'm going to use it probably for close to the rest of the year um, and then we'll change over. But it is a good translation. I enjoy it. Uh, the publisher is Passiao and that's really the only person that publishes these Bibles, this translation in the MEV. So they're kind of hard to find. There's not really a lot of like choice, which I know sounds so weird, but for me it's a big deal. Mine's in purple. This Bible is actually a gift to me from my mom because the print wasn't big enough when she ordered it. Um, it does have a center column, so it's a two column Bible with the center column for some study, which does make it nice. Um, they do not claim that this is a study Bible. It is a thin line edition. And I've used thin lines to preach from for a long time. Uh, I really wanna do, one of these days when I'm in the office, I wanna go over the Bibles that I've used because I've used some pretty cool ones. So that is all for like my study pocket. I make mention to the little elf Dwight Schrute pop. That's on there just for a little bit of fun because I like to have fun. So I'm kind of a crazy guy. I'm a little out there. I do have some ADD, probably ADHD. Never been like told by a doctor, but I would assume. So the next thing in is another pocket that uh, when I was a youth pastor, when I would switch this bag, I kept my Nintendo Switch in just when I took a break to have a little bit of fun. Um, at this point in time, I do not carry my Switch with me. It stays at home and instead I have a laptop, I have my laptop charger for my MacBook. So I keep this, that's really all that's in here and it's a big enough pocket to keep a ton of other stuff. But right now it just houses my MacBook charger so that I know that that's safe in there. Uh, in the tiniest of front pockets, uh, which is kind of like a key pocket almost in, in a way, like I wouldn't throw keys in there, but it's for smaller, tech stuff. I don't really know what the plan was for it, but it's cool. And it houses my AirPods. I know super bougie, but these were a gift from my wife. Uh, this is, these are like, this is a second generation AirPods. So it's not like the pro or anything, uh, the pros or anything, but I love my AirPods. They go everywhere with me. I use them as a USB talking device because I hate holding my phone to my ear. Now that does backfire sometimes because they're small enough that people can't really see them because I got these big old ears. But so people try to talk to you and you're like, hey, I'm on the phone, hold on. But I carry AirPods with me. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts, uh, a lot of YouTube content. Um, right now I've been listening to a lot of pastors. So uh, the productive pastor, Chad Brooks, who we recently talked about, as well as the pro pastor, I think is his name, which is like super good channels. If you are in the ministry and you're new like I am, I'm young into this lead pastorate. But uh, it's been great and they've been really encouraging, uh, not specifically to me, but their content has. So I would encourage you to go look and check them out. It's pretty awesome. So lastly, well, let's not say lastly yet. So I didn't know if I was gonna talk about this pocket because it just didn't seem important. There's some pockets on the side of this bag 
that are super small. And in one of them, I call my like toiletry kit. Um, so I have some tooth care, like I have those little like uh, uh, Colgate like toothbrush things on the go, just in case your breath gets funky from coffee or whatever, that's nice to have. I have some dry cologne that is from uh, Cremo, which is like a Walmart brand, uh, but it's a bourbon vanilla solid cologne is what they call it. it. Smells super good, so if I am done training or doing something and I just kinda wanna throw on a fresh scent to not smell bad, I'll throw that on. I don't utilize that a lot, but it's there. Again, a gift from my wife, which was really nice. I have a little mini first aid kit in this candy mix thing, uh, which is just cool. So there's some band-aids and stuff. I'm not going to get all into that. But just in case there's a cut or something and someone needs it. That was one of the things that I put in there as a youth pastor because I found I needed those a lot. And then I have insurance information and this little Walmart fishing license thing. But those are the side. The other side pocket sometimes has like uh, a nail care set, but... I don't carry that a ton because I just take care of my nails at home. Now, again, I know there's a ton. I just want to be prepared for a lot of like the random situations you come into as a pastor. In the very front pocket, I have the big set of church keys. These are to our gym, to our annex building, to different offices and various things in the church. This is my big set. So I have this because if someone needs it, I don't really want to have to give them my car keys. I can just go, here you go. Like I know it's a big jumbled mess, but normally I pick the key because I know what key goes where, and then they bring it back. And trust me, you don't want this thing in your pocket. It is not light. Um, I used to carry the key bar just like this in my pocket, and it was really annoying. And so, yeah, there's that. But my keys, because we have a building, eventually one of the plans is to change that and to have every room kind of like have a, like have a master key for every room. But at this point, not really obtainable um, price-wise, and that's okay. But so big keys for now. Uh, then in the back, I have a Spuds microfiber cloth for my glasses and my tech. I have a Leatherman Wave, just in case there's ever anything that I need a screwdriver or a pry bar, scissors or something like that for. I do carry the Leatherman Wave with me. It is my favorite multi-tool of all time. The pliers come in handy probably more than anything and that's why they're in there. But because I also do carry a pocket knife and you just never know what you're gonna need it for so it just sits in the bag. I carry around these bit kits. Uh, the glasses, like driver that's in that comes in handy a lot with glasses. And so it's always nice to just have that and have like that extra sense of security. And then in that pocket, I carry this little stand that I won from this like shooting thing, this shooting game with Airsoft at our mall. And so boom, I have that. Kinda cool, kinda cute. It's pink, I do really like pink. It almost looks like a piece just fell off of there, which wouldn't surprise me. Oh yeah, it definitely did. A little like, whatever. This thing's cheap and janky, but it's in there just in case I need a stand when I'm listening to content or don't want to have my phone just chilling. And then the last thing in my bag, y'all. I know this is a little redundant. So it's this Anchor Portable Bank slash wall adapter. So sometimes you just need more juice so I have this one because I can pull it out. It'll charge my stuff real quick. It normally gives my phone a full charge. But also, if I need to plug anything into the wall, a keyboard or, um, I mean, anything that you could think of. There's some random stuff. Um, if I want to charge my iPad, but I want it to be plugged in the whole time, boom, I have that wall charger. I actually got this when we had our baby girl so that I could have a two-prong, a two-plug um, outlet for mine and my wife's phone while we were at the hospital. But now it's in my bag and honestly, I use this charger if I'm gonna use one. This also gives me one that I can throw my wife if she needs it versus having to have her attached to my bag. So kind of a cool little thing, literally got it for the hospital and now I have it in every single day that I go out. And honestly, it's, a, it's the charger that I use more than anything. Um, I think at the airport they think I'm weird whenever I travel um, because I have redundancies but part of the thing for redundancies is the youth pastor thing um, I would have them a lot of that stuff for youth activities so that I could have them uh, make sure that they could get a hold of their parents like I know that you have me and I can call but I didn't always want to do that anyways I know that's a lot and it seems really crazy and as I went through it that's a lot I had more in my bag earlier er like even at the beginning of this year I had more and I really worked on bringing things down so things I want to change a one notebook system would be amazing like one like maybe not one notebook but everything in the same cover would be awesome 
um, update to update my computer and just continue to minimize and take away as I need to, right? As we adjust to the job. I am 22 days into being a lead pastor and I'm really enjoying it. I feel like I'm coming into my own and um, I think that that's a good thing. Now, when I say coming into my own, what I mean is like not trying to be what I think people expect me to be and just being who God has created me to be. As we close out this video, I just want to give a huge shout out to Chad Brooks um, for putting out this challenge. It's fun. I've seen some other guys jump on it. Um, however, if you're watching this, which you're probably not, I'm a small channel, but I did send a, like I tried to join the Productive Passers Facebook group. So hopefully I get on there pretty quick, uh, get in some community with some pastors. I do have that here in Cheyenne, but you know, the more the merrier, the more you, you can learn so much from other pastors. So if you're young and in the ministry, man, jump in and listen to other people's ideas. You don't have it. The college or seminary that you went to didn't give you all the information that you need to succeed. They gave you what they could. And now it's our job as pastors to just keep growing and keep learning. Um, I had a, I have and had a great mentor in our lead pastor, our previous lead pastor, and uh, still have access to him. He's our mentorship pastor now, and he's still going to be a huge asset to me. But that doesn't mean that there's not other people with great ideas. So go and get more ideas. But so huge shout out to Chad Brooks for this challenge. Um, I will tag you in this because you said that that's what you wanted. But hey, listen, the Christian life is all about growing and learning um, and experiencing Christ. And I pray that you're doing that. Now, this is TJ with BHC Lead P, and I hope that you have a phenomenal day. Remember that I love you. Jesus loves you. Um, I did forget to say like and subscribe. So like and subscribe. But more importantly, Jesus loves you, and I hope that you have an amazing, phenomenal week. For any of those of you who are curious, is that backpack heavy? Yeah, it's a little bit. Gives you a workout. It is what it is. I'm really sore today. So yesterday I went, I preached. Um, and then I went and helped someone train for a fight. Um, I do do a little bit of training and uh, expected it to be like, okay, we're gonna work on mitts and technique and help him and spar a little bit. It turned into a full workout. I haven't worked out since we had our daughter and that's like eight weeks. No, it's more than that. It's like, I think she's 10, yeah, she's 10 weeks old and I am incredibly, incredibly sore. So yes, the backpack is heavy, but it's worth it to make sure that I'm always prepared uh, for anything ministry throws at you. Again, have a great day, guys.